In other coal mining countries, such as Belgium, France and Germany, but in Bards had been in use since the 1880s. The problem in the UK was that the miners had to travel home in their dirty and sometimes wet clothes, with a grave chance of contracting a number of health problems, such as pneumonia, bronchitis and rheumatism. Then, when they did get home, they were bringing all that dust into the house with them. It was the housewife's job in those days to heat the water on the open fire for the miners' baths, as well as cleaning and drying all his work clothes. This was backbreaking work and again could lead to a number of serious health issues, such as premature births and miscarriages, and sometimes young children could be scalded by the hot water. The above photo shows a typical scene of a miner taking a bath in front of an open fire. These health issues were recognised by the social reformers of the 1880s and they lobbied the government to make the necessary changes. David Davis, the owner of the Ocean Colliery Company in Triharis, sent a delegation to Europe in 1913 to see these baths. In 1916, a royal commission called the Sankey Commission was set up by the government of the day, which was to investigate the social and living conditions in the coalfield. The result of this investigation was for a miners' welfare fund to be set up with a view to improve the social well-being recreation conditions of the workers around the coal mines. Then, in 1926, a special fund was established for the building of pitted baths under the control of the Miners' Welfare Committee. From 1921 to 1952, the Miners' Welfare Fund built over 400 pitted baths in Britain. The design of the building was in the international modern movement, with clean lines, flat roofs and much use of glass for natural light and to make the buildings airy. Some of the buildings were painted white, like the one in Aberpilgrim. This is the plaque that commemorates the opening of the pitted baths. It can now be found in the Welfare Hall. You can see from the plaque that the pitted bars was opened and handed over to the trustees on the 25th of February 1939. Two miners making their way home at the end of the shift, probably before 1939 when the pitted bars opened. When they got home they would have had a bath in a tin bath similar to the one shown in the photo. a newspaper clipping of the opening of the baths. It was the first to be opened in the Neath Valley and the 35th to be opened in Wales. It was opened on the 25th of February 1939 and at a cost of £26,000 and had a capacity for 1,080 workers. This is the presentation key which was given to Sir William Jenkins MP on the opening day of the pitted baths. A big thanks to Alan Francis who uh, drew the schematic of the pitted baths. Thank you Alan. This photo shows an aerial view of the pitted baths and on the left you can see the uh, barns of Glynabont. This photograph shows the pitted baths and if you look closely in the background on the left hand side you can see Aberpurgo and pitted baths as well. A rear view of the pitted baths. On the left you can see the white bridge and if you look closely above the white bridge, you can see the rugby ground. A photo taken on the road outside the pitted baths with Ken Mack, Pat Walsh and Gwyn Duffy on their way to see the Wales versus Scotland rugby game. A 
following is a series of photographs taken of the Pitti Baths. This one shows the rear of the Pitti Baths and shows the lower surface yard as well. This one was taken from the White Bridge and shows the front of, of the building and the canteen on the left. A similar photo but showing more of the road into the village. This photo was taken by Glyn Davis from the, the tips and shows the side and back view of the baths. This is a more of a panoramic view taken from the rugby field. A few photos of the buses waiting outside the pitted baths to convey the clean miners home. Who can remember the miners running down from the lane, across the road, into the pitted baths? The sound of their hobnail boots on the pavement. I can remember it quite well. Canteen ladies pose outside the entrance of the pitted baths from left to right. You have Mrs. May Williams, Mrs. Nancy Baker, and in the middle, Mr. Pat Walsh. On the right of Pat Walsh, who we think is Mrs. Myra Lewis and Mrs. Harrod. Looking out of the window of the canteen is Mrs. Nancy Baker. The end of an era. The windows have been boarded up and the gates are locked and the building now is waiting for demolition. In this photo you can see Empire Avenue to the left with the white bridge in front of it. And then you can see the pitted baths back and side view. And you can see the little JCB about to start work on the demolition of the building. Demolition has started and unfortunately the first to go is the canteen. In this photo you can see the wrecking ball making short work of demolition of the internal walls of the pitted baths. Youngsters of the village have gathered to look at the demolition and with the hands on his head you can see Reg Harrison Beachy. A few of the village elders checking out that the work is going to plan. Left to right you've got Harry Lewis, Ivor Williams and M Waters. Shown is a newspaper clipping of the opening of the Aberpurgum Pitted Baths. It was opened on the 4th of November 1939 at a cost of £36,000. The capacity was 2,112 workers. An early photo of the Aberpurgum Pitted Baths, probably late 60s, early 70s, with the buses waiting to take the miners home. A few decades later and it looks like most of the workers are travelling back and forth to work by car.
The next two photos are of the canteen at Abapurgum and the only one I can recognise in the photo is on the left hand side there with a the moustache Mickey voice. Four miners waiting to pick up their cap lamps either at the start or end of their shift. Howard Hall taking a shower at the end of his shift. The pitted bads at Upper Purgon still stand in at this stage. In the background you can see Arbaburgo Manor House. The baths at Arbaburgo were knocked down. Above it you can see what we call the horse field, where the horses were left out uh, during the miners' fortnight holiday. I'd like to thank the following people for the use of their photographs. Glyn Davis, Gareth Pritchard and the Village Facebook site. And anyone else where I may have missed.